Now we move on to the subject of non-current assets at the top of the balance sheet, um, or as they're often known, property, plant and equipment. And there's a lovely question that covers all the angles as regards property, plant and equipment, um, a fantastic question called Simon's. What it does is it shows you a matrix or a note for the um, property, plant and equipment of an engineering business known as Simon's and then it asks you to audit the, uh, the, the property, plant and equipment. So let's take a look at that question. Simon's requirement first, we should read the requirement first, required list and describe audit tests you would perform to verify the amounts shown in the fixed assets in the company's accounts for the current year ended 31st of March. 15 marks, which means you've got to come up with 15 tests, which sounds insane, but it's, it's quite easy to be honest with you. When you look at this scenario, you'll realise how. And then B, if the company did not maintain a fixed asset register, then uh, describe the problems you would experience and how it would affect your audit work and opinion. It's quite cute, this, actually. It's getting towards the end of the syllabus, this um, question part B, and it's starting to look at the idea of a scope limitation. I don't know if you've heard of that idea, but um, when the records are insufficient for us to do a proper audit, then we end up with what's called a scope limitation, and that affects our... Uh, opinion in the financial statements or, or opinion of the financial statements. So that's part B. I like this. I like this question. It's a good question. Part A, um, the great thing about these 15 marks is it breaks down into 5, 5 and 5. When you look at the top of the scenario, when you look at the scenario, you'll see that you've got um, freehold land and buildings, plant and machinery and motor vehicles. And as you might imagine, you simply do 5, 5 and 5 for each. And, well, let's be honest, A-E-I-O-U is five letters, right? So you can do, you can do A-E-I-O-U, then A-E-I-O-U, then A-E-I-O-U, repetitively, first for land and buildings, then for plant and machinery, and then for motor vehicles. You can do that, but there's another mnemonic, which you might remember from earlier studies, uh, is, is also very useful and um, you can use it interchangeably A E I U U and prove. Prove is the audit assertions. Prove is the five things that you need to prove in order to assert that the financial statements show a true and fair view. And the five things that you assert are presentation, records, ownership, valuation and existence. So for example for freehold land and buildings you might do prove. It doesn't really matter particularly which one you go for, but I would suggest you do your favourite twice and you do the one that you like least, uh, just the once. It is okay to do A, E, I, O, U um, three times, but it does get a little bit repetitive and you've, there's a danger you might, not, you might not really score the marks that you should score. Prove tends to generate slightly different ideas, so I do recommend it to you. Um, well, we've already done quite a lot of AEIOU, so I've got a slight leaning towards doing prove AEIOU and then prove, I think. Not particularly strong leaning towards that, but yeah, what the heck, eh? So we'll give that a go and see how it works out. You've been asked to carry out the audit of the fixed assets of Simons Engineering for the year ended 31st of March. The draft accounts are as follows. And we've got uh, land and buildings, plant and machinery and motor vehicles. We've got uh, cost, um, opening changes, closing, uh, depreciation, um, opening changes, closing, and the net book value at the year end. And the figure that we're actually auditing in the financial statements is that you see the figure of 865,000 at the bottom right hand side of the matrix. Uh, that's the figure that would be transferred from the notes into the uh, balance sheet on the face of the balance sheet, on the face of statement of financial position. During the year, during the current year, and the 31st of March, the company purchased some land and built a new factory, which was completed during the year. So that's the additions. And you can see that we've got a figure of 292,000 for that factory. So I guess quite a small factory. 
Uh, the company maintains a fixed asset register for all fixed assets and depreciates its fixed assets at the following rates. And you might notice a mistake in land and buildings. The company's policy is to charge a full year's depreciation on assets in the year of purchase, no depreciation in the year of sale. And it says, um, you know, listen, describe the audit tests you would perform to verify the amounts shown in the fixed assets in the company's accounts for the end of 31st of March. So, yeah, let's do it. Land and buildings. P, presentation. Presentation is just another word for disclosure. It's important that the financial figures show a true and fair view in the context that they are accurate, but also in the context of their presentation, their disclosure. So, I mean, one thing that you need to present correctly is the accounting depreciation note. And you'll note that the accounting depreciation note, as regards land and buildings, suggests that land is depreciated at 2% on cost. Of course, land is not supposed to be depreciated, right? So we've got to audit that and get them to change it. I would uh, verify that Simon's has changed the depreciation to 2% on buildings as, as land has an infinite life. So they need to change their accounting policy notes. I would verify that Simons has changed the depreciation to 2% on buildings as land has an infinite life and therefore is undepreciated. Are records... Uh, records... Records is, is all about you know, the records and things being recorded in the right period. Uh, the completeness of the records, the completeness of the um, transaction recording, uh, the cut-off, hacha, that's also included in records. Make sure the records agree with the FS, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but I think the main record that I want to go on about is the 292. Do you see the 292 for additions? Um, what I feel like doing as regards the additions, I'm not so bothered about last year's figures of, of 353,000 because that would have been audited last year. What I'm really excited about, what I'm really concerned about, is the 292,000. So, records. What I want to do, just maybe re-perform the calculation. I will... Recalculate the additions figure to confirm its accuracy. Now, I'm not going to just say that. I'm not just going to say, I will recalculate the additions figure to confirm its accuracy. I'm going to show what I'm expecting to see as regards these figures. Again, I'll use that word, say. So we'd have land, which might be, say, 150,000. We might have materials, which might be, say, 50,000. And we might have labour, which would be capitalised if you build your own factory of 92 and that would give us 292 and what I want to do is make sure they've added up that schedule correctly because you know people make mistakes so that's the record that I want to audit oh ownership oh you got you've got to confirm ownership of the land to the uh, land registry oh ownership I would 
confirm ownership of the land. to the land registry. I don't know if you've heard of this concept. I don't know if it applies in every country in the world. I imagine it does, even if not exactly the same in each country to country. But um, here in the UK, there's a, there's a register. I think it's in Cardiff. There's a register where they uh, record... The, um, the, the all the land in the entire country and who owns it and more importantly they record transactions when land moves from one person to another person and obviously there's been a purchase here so we want to see that the land registry has registered Simons as the new owner uh, V for valuation should we should we just double check that it hasn't suffered an impairment? That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Shall we? Or should we do something else? Actually, I don't feel like doing impairment. How about, how about surveyor's report? I will agree. The cost evaluation to the surveyor's report <clears throat> E existence well you just confirm the existence by inspection right existence I will confirm the existence of the um, new building by driving round to inspect it. Here's an interesting thing I just did just there. I was looking at the previous answer, and I liked it, but I thought to myself, it's a little bit short. So when you look at this sentence, do you notice it's slightly longer than it needs to be? I don't really need to say, by driving round to inspect it. I could just say, by inspecting it, couldn't I? But what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for volume. I know it sounds completely mad, but what I want to make sure is, is this kind of 15 word rule. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ah, do you see? So by just filling it out a little bit more, I'm just making sure that I get this big red pen and I get a nice big tick from the marker. Because this that I'm generating now, just like every single answer in this course so far and in the future, are all exam standards. So what I'm looking for is exam standard answers. Now that is definitely worth a full mark. The previous one, do you know what? It is absolutely perfect as it stands and it should get a full mark. But you could possibly argue it's a little bit short. Okay, on to um, plant and machinery. So this one's going to be AEIOU. A. Analytical review. Um, how about thinking about the life of the machines? Plant and machinery, 10% on cost. Do you know, I have a bit of a problem with that. Some plant is going to last three years, and some plant is going to last 15 years, and it's not all going to be the same, so I don't really like that. Anyway, let's, let's, by the way, 10% on cost is giving you a life of 10 years, isn't it? I will uh, review 
the lives of the disposed plant and compare to the policy of using 10 years. That, by the way, 10 years is 10%. If you charge 10% per annum, you're depreciating over 10 years. And I'm using my brain when I'm doing that, so I'm doing analytical review. I will review the lives of the disposed plant and compare to the policy of using uh, 10 years. Disposed plant? Was there some plant being disposed? Yeah, there was. Did you notice its cost that was coming out of the cost section of the note was a figure of 29,000? Um, do you see that the uh, accumulated depreciation on the disposed plant is 25,000? So if the cost was uh, 29,000 and the accumulated depreciation was 24, 24, 25, 25,000 was 25,000, then the remaining net book value at the point of disposal was 4,000. And I feel like doing something with that. AE. Inquiry. I will ask plant manager what price was disposed plant sold at I'll ask the plant manager, what price was disposed plant sold at? And verify the profit has been calculated correctly. Calculated correctly. I will ask the plant manager, what price was disposed plant sold at and verify the uh, profit has been calculated correctly. So, if the cost was 29,000 and the accumulated depreciation was 25,000, then the NBV is 4,000. If they were sold for 5,000 and the NBV is 4,000, then the profit on disposal is 1,000. And they should have got it right, and that's what I'm going to test. AEI inspection. Well, we've got some additions, haven't we? So let's inspect some invoices. Inspection. I will agree. The additions to purchase invoice values to confirm accuracy. Phew, again, I did exactly the same thing there. I will agree the additions to purchase invoice values to confirm accuracy. Did you notice we don't really need to confirm accuracy? I just sort of added it on just to make the answer slightly longer so that I make sure I get a full mark. Because what I want to happen is this, isn't it? That's what I want to see. Getting a full mark. A-E-I-O, observation. Observation, watching the machines, making sure they're still working. O. Observation. I will observe the machines in use to identify an 
any impairment. I will observe the machines in use to identify any impairment. Any impairment uh, if the people working the machines are constantly swearing at the machines and thumping the machines and bashing it and getting generally annoyed with the machines, then the chances are that particular machine is, is rubbish. It's impaired. A-E-I-O-U, recomputation. Should we just recompute the depreciation? It's too easy to say no, isn't it? Recomputation. I will recompute the calculation for depreciation to verify its accuracy. I will recompute the calculation for depreciation to verify its accuracy. A E I O U. Oh, I'm done. Okay, back to prove. Prove on the motor vehicles. Prove on the motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. P. Presentation. Uh, what shall I do as regards presentation? Um, I don't know. What shall I do? Um, uh, it's getting harder now. Because we've taken most of the ideas. I've got lots of ideas in my head, but they sound slightly repetitive. Um, oh, I'll tell you what. Here's, a, here's an easy one. It's a bit similar to the previous one, I must admit, but I'll get away with it. The thing that's presented in front of you, um, the matrix, is, um, is really how a note would be presented as regards um, an engineering company for fixed assets, for property, plant and equipment, and presented in front of you as a column of numbers, right? And column of numbers, people make mistakes. So let's re-perform the calculations. I would re-perform the calculations presented in the motor vehicle motor vehicles column to confirm accuracy uh, PR records I would prefer, I'll just, let's read this back to you. I would re-perform the calculations uh, presented in the motor vehicles column to confirm their accuracy. Ah, that's good. Ah, records. Um, yeah. I suspect this is pretty common worldwide, although I don't swear to know. Uh, here in the UK, the uh, again, I I'm, I'm don't know if they're all down in, in uh, Swansea. This one's in Swansea. Um, I don't know whether this is actually true, if I've got this right exactly, but I think it's Swansea. Down in Swansea, in the UK, in Wales, as it happens, there's an office that uh, records uh, all the vehicles and all the registration plates and who is the registered owner of each vehicle. Uh, we should be the registered owner of the Simons vehicles. Simons should be the registered owner of the Simons vehicles. I will agree the regist registered ownership 
I will agree the registered ownership is in the name of Simons for all the new vehicles. And I guess what I'm doing there is I'm confirming ownership, which is a little unfortunate because that's the next phrase. I will agree the registered ownership is in the name of Simons for all the new vehicles. O ownership so I'll have to think of something else I'd do as regards ownership um, how about insurance documents I would verify ownership to insurance documents as well that's really short isn't it so I might have to string it out a bit I would verify ownership to insurance documents as well to really confirm ownership Same old story, I'm not actually saying that that extra bit at the end is actually adding anything. It's just making sure that the answer looks sufficiently long to attract a full mark. And then V, valuation. Well, you know, impairment in vehicles, they're a real thing, aren't they? Vehicles, they smash when you drive them into lampposts. Vehicles, do I mean vehicles or valuation? I mean valuation. So, valuation, valuation, I will inspect any vehicles in the workshop for potential For potential impairment, I will inspect any vehicles in the workshop for potential impairment and then ooh, E for existence. I would confirm the existence of motor vehicles not available for inspection to the um, registered keeper who's unlikely to lie to us so if there was some sort of fraud whereby a whole load of cars had been bought and then actually they've been sold on but the guy who was responsible for the purchase and had stolen the money from the sale had done so he would then cover that up by pretending that those vehicles that had come in were all with a load of salesmen driving up and down the road well if those salesmen are driving up and down the road well we'll phone them on the road right they'll have a mobile so we'll phone up on the mobile if the guys don't exist they won't pick up the phone will they so we'll identify the fraud that way and let's face it, unless everyone's in on the fraud, in which case it's going to be impossible to identify it anyway, if, if everyone's in the fraud, even if though you phone them up and that guy actually exists, and you say, you know, do you have a Mondeo, blah de blah de blah and he says, no, I don't have a Mondeo, blah de blah de blah I drive my own car. And you go, right, okay, what's up to the Mondeo? What Mondeo? And then you're in, you've discovered the fraud. 
Lovely, yes, I, I must say I'm very fond of that question and it ain't finished yet, so let's do part B. Part B. Uh, if the company did not maintain a fixed asset register, describe the problems you would experience and how it would affect your audit work and opinion. Um, let's just explain what a fixed asset register is first of all. Should we do that? Fixed asset Register. Uh, the above register records everything you could possibly want to know. about each item of property, plant and equipment. Um, the above register records everything you possibly want to know about each item of property, plant and equipment. Well, let's give the markers a little bit more to get hold of there. Um, so what exactly do we mean by everything you could possibly want to know? Let's give an example, or examples. The FA register records Um, the purchase price the supplier uh, where the asset is um, who authorized the purchase uh, what's the life of the asset? What similar assets were there? Why we need it? Um, uh, what's its present netbook value? What day we purchased it on? Etc. 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 Everything you possibly want to know about the fixed asset will be in the fixed asset register. And the result of an absence of a fixed asset register is it's going to be a devil of a job to audit fixed assets without that information. Problem. So, without this register, it would be very difficult to audit property, plants, and equipment. So without this register, it would be very difficult to audit property, plants and equipment. But it may still be possible if you have a very good fixed asset manager. However, if there is a very good fixed asset manager, then this person may be able to supply the information required.
However, if there is a very good fixed asset manager, then this person may be able to supply the information required. But let's face it, if there's a good fixed asset manager, then that fixed asset manager surely should have a fixed asset register. I can't really see how you can have a good fixed asset manager and not have a good fixed asset register. So if you don't have a good fixed asset re register, you've probably got a lousy fixed asset manager, in which case you're going to have what I mentioned before called the limitation of scope. Now we're going to look at that in more detail when we get to the uh, audit reporting chapter, which is the very last chapter. So just at the moment, I'm just going to say this. That's my last point. Opinion. However, if it proves impossible to audit PPE, property, plant and equipment, however, if it proves impossible to audit PPE, then this will affect our audit opinion and more on that later. However, if it proves impossible to audit PPE, then this will affect our audit opinion. Okay, lovely. So that is property, plant and equipment covered.